Hello and welcome to another mid-month development update where we bring you the very latest news on Cardano development. Joining me today are Nigel, Kevin and John. But before we dive in, make sure you like, subscribe and hit that bell to get the very latest alerts on what's happening. Now, February was a major release. John, perhaps you want to tell us what was in it and why it mattered. It was foundational for our June hard fork where we have some really exciting things coming and I've touched on them before. Uh, things like improvements for, for Plutus, and pipelining. So just to recap on what we had in 134, this foundational release, we had node optimizations, RAM optimizations, computational optimizations, we had a new CDDL format, we had a CLI tool to be able to uh, figure out uh, exact script costs, which has really helped devs. And we indeed had the new leadership schedule tool, so you could find out exactly when your slot was coming up. Um, and I'm happy to say we received quite a bit of feedback from the community um, and the slot leader schedule tool has been received massive positive feedback and indeed um, the built-in calculator for cost seems to actually be more accurate than some of the third-party alternatives out there. So I think we've done a good job there. I'm excited for what's coming up in June. And Kevin, of course, since that node upgrade, we've pushed out another one. Perhaps you can tell us about that. So we've pushed out uh, node version 134.1. We were so proud of the mempool tracing feature that we'd introduced, uh, that we enabled it by default for all our users. Uh, but it turned out that actually some people didn't want mempool tracing. So we've released a new version of the node that has disabled that by default. It gives the user the option of choosing whether or not to use uh, this great new feature. And it also includes uh, some additional node metrics that the SPOs uh, wanted that were missing in the 134.0 release. So it's a solid improvement. It's got all the features, all the benefits of Node version 134.0, just these two small changes. And we recommend that stateful operators uh, upgrade to this version now. And Nigel, of course, we're only just out of the February release, but already the work has begun for June, hasn't it? Could you tell us more about that? I think a lot of work has been done already for the June, June hard fork. We're now uh, getting to the point where we're code complete and we think, well, that's miles away. So what happens next? Well, we've got a hell of a lot of testing to be done, integration testing, QA testing, component testing. And then the next stage for us is to move into a public test net where we can then get our community members to help us test that release. And it's great because we've got a good selection of different uh, DAP developers and DAPs that are out there that can actually help us test and make sure that we have delivered on the benefits that we're expecting for the June hard fork. Following that, as we approach May, we then get involved with our exchanges and there's a lot of other work that goes on with them to make sure that they're ready, as well as our, all of our other downstream components. And also before June, John, we'll also be looking at further parameter changes to improve the uh, performance of the network. One on the horizon, I believe. Maybe I could just quickly recap on some of the things we've done already uh, this year in terms of changing network parameters. So we've taken the block size from 64 kilobytes all the way up to 80 kilobytes, and that's a 25% increase. And on the Plutus side, for our smart contracts, we've given 40% more memory resources. So it used to be 10 million units and now 14 million units. And let's not forget, as well as at a transaction level, where we have limits around how much uh, resources a Plutus transaction a smart contract can use in, in memory and CPU. We also have block level limits. So it's important that we scale the block level limits so that the transaction level increases we've already provided, we get the biggest bang for the buck there. So we wanna make sure that we expand the block level limits too. So we've already taken them from 50 million uh, memory units for the block to 56. And I suspect in this coming epoch, we're gonna post an update to take that to 62 million. We had wanted to do this earlier, but we released the node and we wanted to give that time to bed in to make sure everything was running optimally before we made any changes. Again, we're being cautious with these changes, but ultimately we are hitting an average of a change every three weeks. Um, so that's, you know, for a network as, I guess, as sophisticated as Cardano, which has a global uptime approaching 100%, you know, we, we have to be careful around rolling out these changes, but I think we're doing so with a relatively aggressive cadence. And just to remind folks, you're gonna see not only these changes we've done in these parameters, block size, block level memory units, and transaction level memory units, but you're gonna see other changes coming out. We're gonna potentially look at not only increasing block size further, but look at uh, maybe how big a transaction is allowed to be, how many CPU units are available to Plutus, other economic parameters that we've discussed with the SPOs. So there's a whole bunch of different things we're going to be tweaking and we're going to get the platform to a place where we feel it's operating at an optimal level. Um, 
And finally, a reminder of why we're doing this stuff, okay? We're doing it to scale the platform so that it has the bandwidth to contend with the demand that's placed upon it. So we want the Cardano platform to scale in time with the demand that it's seeing. And these changes that we've put in up to this point in the year, and indeed the changes we're going to be making uh, for the rest of the year and even into next year, will allow us to, um, to grow out scalability uh, aggressively. And also when we add things like pipelining and layoffs or input endorsers on top, uh, it gives us even more scope to make further changes. So I think I'm feeling quite confident about scaling this out to grow with demand. And of course, that demand is indeed growing. Make sure you check out some of our recent infographics around all the projects building on Cardano. We've got well over 500 projects now building all the way from NFT marketplaces to DEX to Oracles to liquidity solutions. So make sure you check out the latest and have a look at Essential Cardano, our repo, which tries to map the entire ecosystem. Now, Kevin, 1.35 is the next node in the series. A 1.35 follows up on the many new features uh, that we've introduced in 134 uh, by progressing a number of under the hood improvements that are going to be essential for the Vazel hard fork, but which are also essential to enable the parameter updates that uh, John uh, mentioned earlier. And we're keeping a very close eye on the performance of the node so that we still have plenty of headroom uh, to roll out things like block size increases, etc. We're also hoping that we might be able to include some new features uh, that will help uh, SPOs. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But as I said before, don't hold off on your upgrades for Node version 135. Upgrade now to 134.1. It's a great release. It's a solid uh, version. Lots of good features, lots of things that will be great for SPOs. So do that now. Now, alongside uh, these more immediate changes, and of course heading into the uh, the June Vasil hard fork combinator event. There's also another longer term project, uh, the UTXO on disk storage initiative. I caught up with Jack, the product manager for that, to hear more. So Jack, as a project manager within the core Cardano team, a lot of your focus is around the node, consensus, and of course the ledger. Perhaps we can start by giving our viewers a bit of an overview of what the UTXO HD project is. So the UTXO HD initiative is a complex project that is focusing on taking large parts of the ledger state from being kept in memory to a non-disk solution. The Cardano node keeps its ledger state of transactions within volatile memory. And as Cardano continues to scale and grow with users and transactions, uh, the maintainability and sustainability of the ledger state is, is very important. And so to do this, it requires developing and integrating new infrastructure within the ledger and the consensus layers. Uh, and this will enable large parts of the ledger state to be kept on disk. So for those folks who aren't quite sure what UTXO is exactly, Jack, can you explain that to us? Cardano uses unspent transaction outputs. Think of a cash-like model similar to Bitcoin rather than an account-based model like Ethereum. With smart contracts, we have developed what is known as the extended UTXO, which enables the functionality of Plutus scripts and complex arbitrary logic. Think of datums and the redeemers. And so as the network activity grows, so does the growth of UTXOs. Um, so it's important for us to focus on the resource requirements of the node, and they need to remain reasonable so that nodes running on end user systems and machines with Daedalus can maintain a smooth user experience as the network continues to scale. So that's really interesting. What's the progress been like so far? So far, we've added uh, new efficient data structures, and uh, these new data structures were in place as of version 1.33. These new data structures change how we compact, share, serialize, and deserialize data, and how we store UTXOs. And these changes will reduce memory usage and make data structures more efficient for storage and transport over the network. The implementation of the new data structures has actually given us about 40% savings in memory in a running node. And we've also included RTS flags in version 4.8.0. And these RTS flags are really for those low spec users folks who have less than 16 gigs of RAM on their machine. So users who download the latest version of Daedalus will notice a splash page asking if they would like to enable these RTS flags for a smoother, more efficient user experience. An example of these improvements are improvements in chain replay, sync process, uh, full sync, and stopping the Cardano node. Great. Now, what does the first release entail? 
So the initial implementation is our MVP, an on-disk storage component that we will include that has an in-memory backend via feature flag. And this enables users with enough memory to keep the entire UTXO set in memory for better performance. And this is critical for stake pool operators because they are on the critical path of block propagation. It's important because we need them to mint, validate, and send blocks to their peers as, as quickly as possible. So in turn, those peers can extend the chain upon the previously minted block that they received. In terms of SPO usage, a performance advantage is always received from running on the fastest possible storage mechanism. And in this case, that's RAM. And what can we expect from the full release? So the engineering team is currently focused on the MVP, but a more performant iteration of that is also uh, to be expected very soon. This enhanced version of UTXO HD will transition away from using LMDB and move to a completely bespoke lock structure merge tree. LSM trees are one of the most performant data structures for use by applications like the Cardano node, uh, where we have a blockchain that demands a large number of writes. And so um, LSM trees are data structures that are also widely used for write optimized key value stores. So this is really important. You can take Bitcoin as an example. Bitcoin uses LSM trees as the main mechanism of storing its UTXOs. And what are some of the benefits of that tree structure? So append only writes, a cheap snapshotting mechanism, a cheap rollback mechanism, and efficient monoidal update operations. Our team anticipates the initial release of UTXO HD within quarter two of this year and the full spec release in the latter half of 2022. I also want to give a huge shout out to our engineering team, the consensus, ledger, benchmarking, QA teams. Everyone's been doing a tremendous job getting this across the line. And we're super excited to getting this out to the public. So uh, just a huge shout out to the, all the incredible work that, that they're doing right now. So uh, thank you very much, Jack, for that update. So we're nearly done for this month. Remember to join us on the last Thursday of this month for Cardano 360. Uh, we're going to play out now just to hear some updates from some of the projects building on Cardano. Since it's been a while since you were last on, give the community a quick refresher on who you are and what you're all about. So my name is Calvin. I'm one of the co-founders of Ada Handle. I have my partner uh, and other co-founder, Mr. Goose, on here as well. Um, and just a quick a summary of what Ada Handle is, is we're a unique um, naming and identity solution for Cardano. So each handle is issued as an NFT, and that takes the place of like a complicated address hash. Well, we're Genius Yield. It's a Cardano-based DeFi platform that combines an order book DEX with an AI-powered liquidity management system. Um, we believe that's the first uh, such solution in the industry. Um, and the solution has been built from the ground up to combine DEX and liquidity management system. Uh, our mission is to simplify and democratize DeFi for everyone. The platform unlocks both advanced algorithmic trading strategies and yield optimization opportunities in a very straightforward and uh, hassle-free way. I'm Long, I'm one of the co-founder and the lead engineer at MinSwap. And MinSwap is a community-focused decentralized exchange on Cardano. And you can go there to buy and sell your favorite tokens. So my name is Joss. I'm one of the co-founders of Revuto. And we're a subscription management company. What that means is that we want to help our users manage seasonality for all of their subscription products. So primarily services like Netflix, Spotify, HBO, and similar. Uh, what we do is we create virtual debit cards, one for each subscription that they have, and we enable them to subscribe, control, and pay with crypto. From when we last spoke, how have things been going? And what are some milestones that you've ticked off along the way? Since the last time we were on building with Cardano, we were able to launch our beta sale, uh, which was a massive success for our platform. Since then, we've moved on to making optimizations and improvements uh, for our mainnet launch. Uh, we were also able to secure funding through Catalyst during Fund 7, which was a huge success for us. It showed us that you know we have the community support that we were vying for. Um, it also showed positive growth towards the adoption of our new naming standard. And lastly, we were able to see the handle standard adopted. Um, and used in a few of interfaces from dApps that have launched recently. We have a few more that we haven't announced yet, and we have a ton more partnerships with dApps that just haven't launched yet. But it's definitely exciting to see you know more and more dApps utilize the new standard. The major update is that our ASPO turned out to be um, an amazing success. 
all our four pools are already saturated. And due to how huge interest expressed by our community, uh, we currently discuss how we could address it. All I can confirm is that different options are on the table, so um, stay tuned. Secondly, we released our Genius Dex uh, white paper, and uh, this is what our community has been waiting for a long time. Currently, we prepare a series of educational, uh, explanatory videos and articles to sort of translate technical terminology uh, into simple language. And last but not least, we launched our unique accelerator program, Genius X. Uh, Genius X provides early stage Cardano based startups with basically everything they need to get attraction uh, and scale, not only by connecting them to investors, but also by supporting creation of fundraising strategies, tokenomics, uh, by offering legal support and so on. And of course, these startups will be also integrated into the Genius Yield ecosystem. We launched our testnet. We started our audit and complete the audit. We launched a liquidity bootstrapping event earlier this month and we launched our mainnet this week. Yes, we had quite a few milestones. The biggest one is uh, reaching 350k users for our mobile app. Um, the second one is creating 55,000 uh, native mobile wallets that we've created. Our specialty is really keeping everything mobile and user friendly. And the third is that our staking center is live. So you have the opportunity to stake and farm, which offer quite interesting and competitive yields. So we would invite anyone who's interested to check those out. So what do you have going on at the moment and where is your project headed next? So right now our mainnet is running. Uh, so that means you can go to adahandle.com and mint a handle at any time you want, obviously assuming that it's available. And that's kind of like just where things are at right now in terms of our, our uh, platform. Uh, things that we're working on in terms of high priority is one, as Goose said, we got our Fund7 funding that was specifically for wallet authentication support and open sourcing that software for the community to use. So that's going to be definitely high priority on our list. Next one is going to be smart contract minting. So converting our centralized infrastructure to actually utilize and mint handles via smart contracts. And then we're also just doing some additional research on cross-chain support with protocols like Ergo, um, and then also eventually converting to a DAO. So currently priority for Genius CL is of course launch of the Genius Dex in Q2, 2022. Uh, lately we signed an agreement with a smart contract security leader Twig to run a third party smart contract audit. Also we are in the process of intense internal tests and are gearing up for a public testnet launch. Another priority for us is uh, Genius Academy uh, it's an educational and mentorship platform that teaches DeFi concepts and helps to make uh, better informed decisions and basically achieve financial freedom. Publishing articles, um, videos, podcasts for beginners, intermediate users, and also crypto experts. In the short term, we launched new funding on March 14th. Uh, we are going to release our SDK in April so that other developers can build tools and other stuff to interact with Miswap Dex. And in the longer term, we will start building the Miswap DAO and community governance, and we will release Miswap V2 with a more uh, optimized and decentralized Dex smart contract. So it's a very active research and development phase for us. Uh, we're preparing for a really big push in this coming quarter. We'll have quite a few updates. The biggest one is really getting our fintech part uh, live. So we'll be having an active license from a euro-based um, nation that will be able to passport for Eurozone. So we will be issuing virtual debit cards. We also have some interesting DeFi-related uh, surprises for our community, which we're not allowed to announce quite yet, but it will all be live by the end of June this year. We'll see you next time.